This is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences, and in this how-to, I'm going to show how to implement a custom router which will use metadata tags to route documents into libraries, and this is inside Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. So there's a couple things that I've done with my record center. Uh, I've created and set up a custom router and set it to be used by unclassified records, as you can see here. I've also set up a library called Project Records. And within that, I've created three folders, Project A, Project B, and Project C. What my router is going to do is, rather than trying to route content based on its content type, it's going to evaluate the metadata properties of what's coming in and figure out, one, if it's a project record and should be placed in this project records location, and two, which folder it should be placed in. Now, to send documents to the record center, uh, I've got a team site here. And inside the shared documents library, I've uploaded a couple of documents. I've created a project field, and I've set doc1 to the project A and doc2 to project B. So what's going to happen is when one of these documents gets sent to the record center, uh, it'll invoke the code for my custom router. Uh, the router will then check to see if this document has a metadata property called project. And if it does, that will tell it that this is a project document and needs to go to the project record location. And then it'll look at the value for that project field and determine which folder that this record should be placed into. So let's go ahead and send that to the record center. I've got my code in place and I've got a breakpoint set. Uh, so when we send it, we drop into our on submit file method. Now, again, this is my custom router that I've, I've created. Uh, the class derives from the iRouter interface and I've got this public on submit file method. Uh, that's going to return a router result. Uh, I go ahead and set that initially. Now what this is set to here is success continue processing. Uh, what this tells the system is that uh, if nothing else happens here, we'll go ahead and continue this file normally as we would if the router wasn't here. Now there's a couple things to note that get passed into this method. Uh, one is the source URL, and that's the location from which this file was sent. Uh, the second is this file to submit. Now that's the byte array of the file itself. Uh, another is this records repository property structure, and that's really just all of the name value pairs that represent all the properties that were on this document from its originating location. Uh, the second is uh, result details, and I'll show you how we use that in a second. So the first thing we want to do is get the properties in a fashion that we can start to uh, evaluate them, right, to figure out if this has a project property field or not. Uh, rather than trying to deal with this structure here, I'm going to take all those name value pairs and I'm going to put them into a hash table. Right? This will provide me an easier way to access all of these properties. So let's go ahead and let that execute. And once I get all those properties in a hash table, uh, I'm going to look for a field called project. Right? And again, if it has this project field, that's going to tell me that this needs to go into the project records location. Uh, the next thing I need to do is figure out specifically where in this library I need to put this record. So what I'm going to do is look at the value for that project field. Right. In this case, uh, the value is project A. And I'm going to start to build out the path to this final location. Uh, in order to build out the path to the final location, I parse out the name of the file. And this is using that source URL. And again, that's the location that the file originated from. Now, I could take the opportunity to create a unique name for this record, but in this case, I'm just going to use the same name as the, name, the original name of the file. So I construct my path for the destination. Now, the next thing we want to do, now that we know where the location of this should be, we want to go ahead and put the file in that destination location. So in order to do that, we get an SP folder object for that location. Right? In this case, it's going to be our project records slash project day folder. And then the final step of this is to add the file to that location. So I do a folder.files.add. I pass in the final destination path. I pass in the byte array of the file itself. Uh, I'm going to pass in the hash table of all those properties. Now, this is going to allow the system to try to set all those properties for me. I may want to take the opportunity here to evaluate those properties further, do some manipulation on those properties. But in this case, I'm just going to pass it in as, as a hash table. And then a Boolean that identifies if the file already exists, it should be overwritten. 
I'm going to set it to false in this case. Now we reset our router result to success cancel for the processing. And what this tells it is that we've successfully completed our processing of our file, meaning we put it in the proper location, and there's no more processing that needs to be done. So it's going to give a success flag and it's going to stop processing here. So we let this finish out and uh, we see that it's completed successfully. Now this is in my team site, so I'm going to go back to my record center, look in project A, and you see it's placed the document as a record inside of this location. Uh, you also see that it's propagated the metadata uh, for the title field here. If I go back, let's try it with doc2. We'll say send to record center. We'll go ahead and let this execute. It completes. Now if we go to the project B folder, we see that it's put in the proper location. One other thing to point out, and that's if an error occurs during the processing of your router. Uh, you can send back a message to the user to let them know what happened. So in our case, if an exception occurs, uh, I'm going to set the router result to reject file, which means that an error occurred, and it's not going to continue processing. I'm also going to set this result details string to a custom message. Now this was passed in, this is a reference uh, that's passed into our method here. I'm going to set the value of that. It's going to take that value and display it back to the user when an error happens. So I'm going to make an error occur by sending another record with the same name uh, back into the record center. So we'll let this process and we'll see that our error message is passed back uh, to the caller application. Right. So I hope you've gotten an idea of how you can implement a custom router to route records into the record center based on their metadata.